you always know what your next one or two quarters are actually going to look like. Now, one mistake that a lot of people actually do is they keep on waiting for their complete preparation to happen and then only they start giving the interviews. That know your timeline for the next couple of quarters plus start giving the interviews as early as possible. So I used to dedicate my time for DSAs during the weekends. The consistency will lead you there definitely. To make sure that you have some bare minimum return in your to-dos day by day see and track what you are able to like easily achieve also there is one more important thing that you generally do is i try to do things in a sprint right having the momentum having the consistency is going to give you eventual results trust me on that make sure you try to seek opportunities to learn and grow in terms of low level design in terms of design patterns in terms of clean code when you are actually working in your day-to-day job so this is a common struggle that a lot of people actually face and recently I've noticed that a lot of people were actually asking this question in my comment section as well. That let's say if you are working as a full-time software engineer, how do I like manage time for preparing for interviews, right? A lot of people actually, uh, I would say, aspire to take a switch in their job, maybe because of the fact that they want to get some increase in the overall compensation, they want to explore some other industry or X, Y, Z, any reason can be there. But Managing interview preparation with your full-time software engineering job can be something that is pretty challenging, right? So in this particular video, I would like to talk about two, three basic pointers that I always keep in mind while I'm going through a phase of preparation while doing my full-time job, right? These are some of the things that actually worked really great for me for the past uh, two, three years. And I believe this can be really helpful to you as well. I would say take all of this with a pinch of salt, see what your situation is, what exactly you are looking for, what kind of preparation you are actually going to do, what kind of office pressure you have and try to tweak all of these suggestions. But trust me, watch the video till the end to know about some of the most important and some very key pointers that I always keep in mind while preparing for a software engineering interview. So before moving forward in the video, I would like to talk about the new system design 2.0 cohort that we have recently launched. If you are somebody who is actually willing to apply for a lot of product-based companies and you are technically confused on where to actually prepare for low-level design, high-level design and machine coding rounds, then you are actually at the right place. In the new system design cohort, we are going to actually include all the relevant concepts around high-level design, low-level design, machine coding and this time we have kept it kind of like bigger and better. This time we have specifically added a lot of company-specific interview problems solving both in HLD and LLD. We have added interesting concepts around distributed system like Lampot clock, vector clock, consensus algorithms and whatnot. The complete curriculum of this system design 2.0 cohort is mentioned in the link in the description section below. You can use this coupon code coming on your screen to get massive discounts altogether. There is a dedicated video on the channel where you can find all the details regarding the course syllabus. But what I can assure you is based on my experience working as a software engineer and all of the interviews that I have given, this is going to be a very comprehensive course where we are going to talk about all the relevant things that is going to be necessary, not just for you to crack software engineer interviews, but also work as a software engineer. So do check out all the links in the description section below. Uh, all the course syllabus, all the dates, everything necessary is already mentioned there. So now let's come back to the video. Now see, Always when you actually work as a full-time somewhere, right, you always know what your next one or two quarters are actually going to look like. Most of the time in companies, you actually do planning of the next quarters, right? You have your OKRs decided, you have your plans and projects decided. So you actually know that how the next quarter in terms of the overall pressure is going to look like, at least on an average level. There can be situations of on calls, there can be situations of some last time project implementation that might come up. But overall, at least at a broader level, you know that, okay, how the next quarter is going to look like. The moment you know that, okay, the next quarter is something where you will be having some time because let's say you were working on some existing project and now it's the release and the maintenance phase of the project. And you will be probably getting some new project, but the let's say the overall um, requirements are not yet decided. So you know that you will definitely get some good two to three weeks where you can spare out some time and also prepare for interviews, right? So knowing your timeline is going to be important. Also, you also need to ensure the fact that your interviews can actually come up at any point of time. So it's as good, uh, like it's going to be very good if you start preparing for the interviews as early as possible, right? 
Now, making sure that you know what kind of pressure you are going to get in the office and when exactly your interviews are scheduled is going to help you actually align a lot of things. Now, one mistake that a lot of people actually do is they keep on waiting for their complete preparation to happen and then only they start giving the interviews. I believe that's a pretty wrong way to actually go for. You are never going to complete your preparation. You are never going to feel that, okay, now from here, the next interview that I'll give, I'll definitely crack it. That's not how it actually works most of the cases. So what I believe is once you know what timeline you have, then at least start getting some of the interviews scheduled. See, once you start getting the interview schedule, you know what are some of the pain points that you are actually facing in the interview. What are some of the topics that you have to actually focus more? This is something that will only happen when you give actual real interviews where the stakes are actually high. Right. So recently, one of my friends was actually giving interviews for Amazon. At that point of time, he was actually rejected. But the main motive was actually to learn how exactly to maintain the pressure and what kind of questions Amazon is actually asking. And six months later, he again gave the interviews for Amazon, right? Because now he has all the learnings from the past, uh, I would say, interviews that he gave at Amazon. Plus, he was constantly giving more interviews. So, of course, more knowledge was getting accumulated. So, giving interviews is going to also help you in a lot of learning. And you can very easily carve out one hour or let's say one and a half hour in a day, right? Let's say in a week, maybe you just schedule one interview so that you are not also hampering your day-to-day -day work. Plus, that one hour of interview where you are actually using your brain at light like the highest capacity, this is this one hour is going to teach you a lot of things that is going to definitely help you in the upcoming set of interviews. So this is going to be the first and the foremost thing that you should keep in mind that know your timeline for the next couple of quarters plus start giving the interviews as early as possible. Now, one of the important things that comes with respect to time management is that you need to make sure that your primary job is not getting hampered. For that, in the complete day, of course, there is definitely some time depending on you, what kind of person you are, you will be having some particular time slot, which is kind of like the best hour to actually work for you, right? It's kind of like the hour where you are most focused, you can get become the most productive throughout the day. Make sure that you keep that as your focus time. No meetings, no extra work, no household work, nothing for outside that focus time is going to be just your end-to-end -end office work because you need to make sure that your overall efficiency during this preparation phase uh, for the office work is as high as possible. The efficiency will be the highest during your focus hours, right? So make sure that these focus hours you are dedicating in your office so that you do not get any extra pressure on the office side, right? Plus, make sure that during the weekdays, you do not try to do a lot of, I would say, like a lot of people, what they actually do is in their initial days of the preparation, they actually spend a lot of time during the weekdays and then eventually get exhausted. What I believe and something that can be really good is try to keep your weekdays a bit light. I'm not saying don't prepare. Let's say if you are preparing for DSA, maybe just try to solve one question. And if you, let's say, didn't get time, just let's say read out some question altogether and try to understand maybe there is a new approach to a particular problem and try to register that approach in your brain so that later you can practice similar type of questions. But try to win your weekends, right? Weekends are going to be the time where you don't have anything uh, with respect to your office or let's say the holidays as well. Now you can see the next few quarters are going to be having a lot of holidays in India because of a lot of festivals and the marriage season, etc, etc. So what you can actually do is you can try to utilize your holidays, you can utilize your weekends and make sure you maximize the output during the weekends, right? During the weekends, you do not have to cut a slack because you do not have to reply on the emails from the work. You have your complete day planned according to you. You can make sure that you maximize your preparation there. And make sure that during the weekend, weekdays, you do not, I would say, over exhaust yourself. Just keep your momentum going on. See, consistency is going to be more important than um, actually having some small sprint where you are like over exhausting yourself and then eventually you lose it, right? So make sure that you are consistent enough during the weekdays. Like what I used to do was during the weekdays, I used to read a lot of system design articles or let's say watch a lot of system design videos because 
uh, I can actually do that while uh, doing a walk, right? I can just start reading an article while having a walk. But DSA is something that you need to actually take a pen and a paper, try to solve the equation, let's say try to solve the problem, try to code it. It actually needs you to be on the table, right? So I used to dedicate my time for DSAs during the weekends. And during the week weekdays, I try to explore a lot of interview experiences, system design problem approaches, system design mock interview uh, videos. A lot of these kind of content I used to uh, con uh, consume because this is going to actually make sure that during your free time also, you are not over exhausting yourself and you are keeping the momentum. Always understand this thing that maybe you will be in a good shape, not in four months, but maybe in like six months, but the consistency will lead you there definitely. If it takes six months, no worries. After six months, automatically you will see that whatever set of interviews you are giving, your performance is actually improving. This is something that you have to always keep in mind. Now, a lot of people actually have to separately prepare for low level design, separately prepare for high level design, separately prepare for DSA. Now, what I believe is at least on the low level design aspect, a lot of things you can actually learn from your day to day job as well, right? If you're a software engineer already, then in your day to day work, you will be expected to churn out a lot of code. You will be expected to write a lot of code altogether, right? Make sure you try to seek opportunities to learn and grow in terms of low level design, in terms of design patterns, in terms of clean code when you are actually working in your day to day job. This will also go give a very good impact to your current employer, right? That you are actually working on engineering excellence and you are working on code quality improvement, but also will save a lot of time for your preparation as well, because now you are actually looking things in a more practical way. Like for example, let's say somebody asks you to write a utility. See what can be some good practices to put that utility in place, right? How you can make it more reusable, how you can write the tests in a more efficient way, right? How you can follow some clean code practices and whatnot. So making sure that you find opportunities to learn low level design and similarly to learn high level design during your day to day work can also save up a lot of time for you. This was something that I used to do in Google and Microsoft to ensure that whatever work I'm doing, I try to seek out opportunities that can be really helpful in interviews, like understanding some design patterns, understanding some architectural patterns and whatnot. This is kind of like a good hack that you can definitely try to apply. Now, again, I'm not sure how many of you guys actually do, but I like from the last year only, I started preparing to do's uh, kind of like a daily to do kind of like a thing. This is not something that I am able to follow very religiously, but trust me, the days where I for, try to follow my to-do as much as possible, that uh, those are the days which are the most productive. You need to make sure that you have some bare minimum return in your to-dos day by day. See and track what you are able to like easily achieve, what you kind of like overachieve, like you thought that, okay, this is going to take a lot of time, but actually that thing got resolved in easier way, right? See what are the things that you can automate or what are the things that you can delegate and save up more time. The moment you start having, um, I would say note of every single second that you are actually spending in the day and you start controlling your time, that will be the moment where you will see that, okay, what are some of the gaps that are going on and how you can fulfill those gaps so that you can carve out more time for your preparation. For example, let's say if you are somebody who is going to travel to your office and you have a company cap, I'm just taking a hypothetical example. So that travel or compute, commute time is something that you can use more wisely, right? You can maybe do some office work in that time or maybe read out some articles in that time and try to utilize because you have to just sit back, sit on the back of the cab, right? You don't have to do anything extra. So make sure you utilize those kind of time uh, spans as well. Also, there is one more important thing that you generally do is I try to do things in a sprint, right? For example, like for the next 14 days, I'm going to make sure that this is the these two are the most important things for my focus. For example, in office, whatever is the highest priority project, this is going to be something that I have to deliver anyhow. Plus, let's say if the office pressure is a bit high, then on the interview preparation side, I will try to take some a couple of easier topics and try to wrap them up in the next 14 days. After the 14 days, I'll take a two, one or two break, uh, break days altogether so that I can just overall relax and balance out things. While doing things in a sprint, you have more consistent weeks Right. Don't try to win the day. Try to win the week. I like I always try to make sure that throughout the week when I see as an overall average, I have a lot of things done. Right. So this is something that you can try to follow and don't just try to get break like every weekends. Right. Make sure you utilize your weekends well. And then 
eventually there will be days where due to some xyz reasons you will not be able to do your interview prep or let's say you have to take a time out uh, time off from the office right so those days will start automatically coming right you will nowadays also realize that even if you have not planned a relaxed day sometimes what happens is that you have to eventually take a leave and let's say handle some xyz extra things right so make sure that the days which you are focused the days which you are which which you have actually planned to execute something you have a bit of more consistent days so that you can create that momentum having the momentum having the consistency is going to give you eventual results trust me on that a lot of people actually complain we are not able to manage time well see even if you are in college you will be having a lot of college related tasks you will not be able to manage time if you, even if you are in let's say a full time job you will be having a lot of office related tasks and you will not be able to manage your time there will never be an ideal situation where somebody will ask you that okay for the next 5 months we will pay you don't do any job just prepare for your next interview that's not how it is done so everybody has to actually go through this right so it's not like you are at a disadvantage most of the people do their preparation in the same way and this is how everybody has to navigate so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below that if these are some of the tips that you can try to apply and if you are already applying this do let me know what do you think about it if you have some another tips or hacks that can be really helpful for the other community people that they can use in order to save their time and utilize their time for their next interview preparation while working as a software engineer do let us know in the comment section below i would be really happy to read all of that that being said let's wrap this particular video here i hope this was actually useful for you we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to continue our discussion on tech and career till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off